Welcome back to the week 15 edition of my weekly NFL Pick'em. We are down to the last three of these for the regular season, guys. This is how the playoff picture is looking right now, and as I go through the picks, I'll throw in some playoff scenarios for certain teams because these wildcard spots are still up for grabs in both the AFC and the NFC. Let's not waste any more time and talk about that epic week 14. I don't know how you all feel, but to me, that was the best week of the 2018 NFL season. There was so much drama and just ridiculousness taking place in almost every single game. Ravens over the Chiefs was my upset special that I was most interested in and it wasn't me trying to discredit the Chiefs because if you're not a fan of Patrick Mahomes you're probably just a Broncos Raiders or Chargers fans but it required some absolute wizardry from Mahomes to pull it off and the Ravens tossed the alley-oop by not blocking Justin Houston on the sack fumble that gave the Chiefs the go-ahead field goal. On the other side of the spectrum the Raiders had a chance to get back into that first overall pick slot with the 49ers beating the Broncos but they pulled a huge upset over the Steelers knocking Ben Roethlisberger to 0-4 in Oakland all time and I'm sure that both of these fan bases we're pretty excited to get that winning feeling once again before the season is over. And the 49ers really lucked out because they're still on pace to finish with the first overall pick. And then it's easy to forget that this week started with Derrick Henry single-handedly destroying the Jaguars with 238 rushing yards, highlighted by his 99-yard touchdown run. That's one of the best performances of the season, and you just have to ask, where has he been this whole season for the Titans? I was really high on Derrick Henry going into the year, but I think with the coaching change, he lost that clout that he had already built up over the previous seasons, and he just hasn't been trusted to be given that heavy workload. Maybe now the Titans can ride Derrick Henry into a wild card berth. If I had to critique week 14 at all, it would be that the refs are still making themselves seen way too much. The biggest concern here is that the NFL League office actually asked for this. They sent a video to NFL officials after week 13 of all the missed holding calls and asking them to increase the number of flags for holding. And they did just that. In week 13, they threw 90 four flags for holding. They settled down a little bit in week 14 with 62, but that's still an absurd amount and the third highest of the season. Maybe I just need to start a new segment based around the refs and their egregious performances, but this offensive pass interference call on Dallas Goddard was one of the worst calls of the season. It took back a touchdown and then the refs tried to throw in a makeup call with this roughing the passer on Randy Gregory. And then this blocked field goal by Bobby Wagner probably should have been a penalty by the definition of the rule. So I'm not really sure why the flag was picked up when they did in fact throw one, but I don't want to be a downer and go through every single Single crappy call by the refs because we'd be here all day so let's move on those of you that checked out my pick em video last week will remember that i made some pretty bold picks and while they were all pretty close for the most part the only upset that i actually hit on required a literal miracle the other video i made last week was some predictions for the rest of the season and the playoffs using the espn playoff predictor and the only regret i have is using my exact week 14 predictions because i was really reaching on so many upset specials and only hit on one of them and those really skewed some of the results so i might have to redo my playoff predictions the video this week. The Super Bowl predictions are still there so you can check that out when you're done here if you're interested. Here are the top picks from week 14 and we had a four-way tie for the top spot. And these are the leading entries overall in this Pick'em Challenge with Skins 18, 18, 18 jumping out of nowhere to take it over the top spot overall. Congratulations. Personally, I'm 79th overall, which means I only fell one spot after a pretty ugly week. I think I'm going to skip that whole picking with my heart, not my head thing for the rest of the year like I mentioned last week because that didn't work out too well. Plus, I want to use these picks in my Playoff Machine video later this week, and I want it to be a little bit more realistic than the last one. Big shout out to everyone that watched my Week 14 Pick video last week. I thought you guys were getting bored of these, and then all of a sudden I have my most watched video of the season so that's awesome I really appreciate you guys and I think that's because you guys were doing such a good job of helping me hit that goal every single week of 500 likes this week the goal continues to stay at 500 likes so please hit that like button it helps me grow this channel helps me make these videos and let's not waste any more time let's get into these week 15 picks on Thursday Night Football, we've got Chargers at Chiefs. This is it, folks, the last Thursday Night Football game of the week. If the Ravens had pulled the upset over the Chiefs, this would have made this game the AFC West Championship, but now the Chargers have to win out and hope the Chiefs lose out to win the division. It's a shame because this would have been such a big game, and now it's going to be a game where neither coach is really going to want to show the other team everything that's up their sleeve, just in case they meet up again in the playoffs. The number one seed is still on the line here for the Chiefs, so they're still going to need to win this game pretty badly, and the Chargers are basically a lock for the fifth seed in the AFC now. Even with Tyreek Hill's availability in question, the Chargers are the visiting team on Thursday Night Football, and Melvin Gordon is probably also not going to be playing in this game, so the odds are against them. Chiefs win 33-31. 
This week we've got Saturday football and we've got Texans the Jets. The Texans got owned by T.Y. Hilton once again, ending their nine game winning streak. While it was a big win for the Colts, it wasn't that big of a loss for the Texans. Obviously you want to win every game, but I said it with the Saints and I'll say it again with the Texans. You really don't want a huge winning streak going into the playoffs, especially if you're going to have a bye week in there because you need to have a taste of losing so that you can remember how much it sucks. The Jets and Bills played in a pretty exciting game. Sam Darnold was the better quarterback of the two rookies and Josh Allen was the better running back of the two. But I don't expect the league's worst three and out offense to be able to hang with the Texans. Texans win 28-16. In the second game on Saturday, we've got Browns at Broncos. Baker Mayfield and the Browns offense was pretty impressive against the Panthers, and they're going to need to continue to play well because they've got a desperate Broncos defense that is looking to redeem themselves after a brutal loss to the 49ers that pretty much eliminated them from the playoffs. The Broncos now need to win out and hope that the Ravens, Steelers, Titans, and Colts lose. I think that that desperation is the difference here. Broncos win 21-17. On to the NFL Sunday, we've got Cardinals at Falcons. The Cardinals lost to the Lions, moved them up to the number two pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, so that was good for them, but the offense looked really, really bad after a few weeks of showing a lot of progress. The Falcons came out hot against the Packers, and then they literally got cold for the next three quarters or so before Matt Ryan got his Kirk Cousins on and won me a few fantasy playoff games with a couple garbage time touchdowns. This week, they're back at home in the Dome where they thrive offensively and should be able to move the ball more consistently. I know someone in the comments is going to argue that the Cardinals beat the Packers two weeks ago in Lambeau and the Falcons just lost in that exact situation. But that's not how any of this works. It's all about matchups. Falcons win 30 to 20. Buccaneers at Ravens. The Buccaneers had the Saints against the ropes in the first half and they let the game slide away from them with 25 unanswered points in the second half, starting with a missed field goal and a blocked punt in the third quarter. This is the kind of inconsistency that the Bucks have had for a while and I think that they'll be in the market for a new head coach here in a few weeks. Meanwhile, the Ravens have suffered their first loss of the Lamar Jackson era in heartbreaking fashion. They took one of the best teams in the league to overtime in their house and Lamar Jackson made some really nice throw in crucial moments to keep them in it. But like I said earlier, the game was lost when Justin Houston came unblocked and stripped Lamar Jackson. I couldn't tell you if that was the offensive line or if Lamar Jackson didn't adjust pre-snap, but I do know that this Ravens team is still pretty good and they control their own destiny here with a chance to win the division with the Steelers collapsing before our eyes. Ravens win 24-13. Lions at Bills. Here we've got the projected ninth overall pick in the draft going against the projected sixth overall pick in the draft. It's actually a shame the Lions weren't better earlier in the season because they've had a nice little schedule here at the end of the season that could have been an easy path into the playoffs, especially with the shape of the NFC this year. Instead, if they win, they would leap into the teens with another win here. I don't know about Lions fans, but I'd like to see a loss here if this was my team. Meanwhile, the Bills are just such an unpredictable team, but they've been pretty solid at home, and the Lions don't strike me as a team that's going to play well in the Buffalo cold. Bills win 21. 17. Packers at Bears. The Packers are now 1-0 in the Joe Philbin era, and in his second game as interim head coach for the Packers, he gets a matchup with the Bears, who can clinch the division for the first time since 2010. The same Bears team that just shut down one of the best teams in the league. No big deal. The Bears can't relax after beating the Rams because Aaron Rodgers got his way with Mike McCarthy being fired, and I think that we see a really inspired version of him this week trying to prevent the Bears from clinching against him. That doesn't mean he's got enough to get past this defense, which is playing some inspired football of their own. Bears win 23-20. Raiders at Bengals. I couldn't find it in me to pick the Raiders against the Steelers last week, even though I did think it was going to be a closer game than a lot of other people expected. And that was mostly because I looked ahead at their schedule and I thought if there was a chance for the Raiders to get a third win on the season, it was this week against the Bengals. The Raiders fired their GM, Reggie McKenzie, this week. I know he had the option to stay on for the rest of the year, but honestly, why would he do that? It's unclear to me if this was brought to him before or after the game, but firing a GM after a win is odd timing. I don't want to rain on the Raiders parade here, but this team is still headed down a very dysfunctional functional path. Usually when a GM gets fired, players step their game up for the rest of the season because they know that their job is in jeopardy now and they want to finish strong and put good film out there for other teams just in case. But I just don't get that vibe from this team. Even the city of Oakland doesn't trust the Raiders right now. The Bengals are in a similar dysfunctional situation and there's even rumors of Hugh Jackson taking over for Marvin Lewis as head coach next year. This game's going to be a hot mess. The best ending for this would be to end in a tie or maybe with a big snowstorm that just cancels this game altogether. Oh, those aren't options? Alright, fine. Bengals win 26-20.
Cowboys at Colts. The Cowboys destroyed the Eagles in so many statistical categories last week, including a record of 45 plus minutes in time of possession, but the refs ended up being the main narrative in this game for good reason. They were awful. You guys know I'm all about a conspiracy theory, and yes, the NFL benefits from the Cowboys being in the playoffs, but the Eagles just aren't that good of a team right now. On the other side, the Colts stole a much needed game from the Texans last week, and they need to continue to roll offensively like that. It looks like the Colts are going to need to win out to make sure they can punch their ticket into the wild card. If the Colts are going to win this game though, Andrew Luck is going to need to have one of his better games of the season, and not only with his arm, but with his legs. The kryptonite for the Cowboys defense so far this year has been a mobile quarterback, and Luck's mobility is an underrated aspect of his game. Here's your history lesson of the week. Four years ago, the Colts were coming off a win over the Texans and playing the Cowboys, who needed to win to clinch the NFC East. This week, I think history repeats itself. Cowboys win 24-21. Redskins at Jaguars. The Mark Sanchez era was very short-lived, and you saw how ineffective he was when Josh Johnson came in and led two touchdown drives for the Redskins, albeit in garbage time. There's technically still a chance for the Redskins to make the playoffs, but they're going to need to beat the Jaguars this week to make that happen. Lucky for them, the Jaguars quit on national TV last week, and if they perform the same way this week, Adrian Peterson might be the one ripping into them the way that Derrick Henry did. But I think that this Jaguars defense is more proud than that, and that they respond this week with a good performance. Jaguars win 16-9. Dolphins at Vikings. The Dolphins pulled off one of the most amazing plays in NFL history. A play that I hope I can tell my kids about one day. I've already got one kid with twins on the way. So what would prevent me from telling my kids about this, you ask? The Dolphins turn around and just fall on their face in the next few weeks. The value of the Miami Miracle really loses its shine. However, there is a legit scenario for the Dolphins to finish 9-7 and seven and still make it in as a sixth seed, where they would go to New England in the wildcard round. I'm sure that the NFL would love that rematch. Speaking of crazy scenarios, though, the Vikings could win one of the next three games finish 8-7-1 and, and also make it in as the sixth seed. This game of two underachieving teams should be a hard-fought battle as they both try to claw their way into the playoffs. The Vikings offense might get a jump start with a fresh approach after firing offensive coordinator John DeFilippo and promoting the quarterback coach Kevin Stefanski. I'm off the Vikings bandwagon as far as thinking that they are one of the most complete teams in the league, but I still think that they bounce back and back their way into the playoffs. Vikings win 28-24. Titans at Giants. So Derrick Henry was my pet cat going into the season. I thought he was going to be doing what he did to the Jaguars to a lot of the shitty defenses in the league. Maybe not 200 plus yard games every week, but he's a freak of nature and he needs to get the ball a lot. I think there might be something with Mike Rabel and the new coaching staff. I'm not sure they don't like his attitude or his effort during the week, but you can't tell me that Deion Lewis has the same game changing potential and therefore deserves even more carries or touches per game. I really liked the Titans offense as a whole coming into 2018, and if they have finally figured out how to use Derrick Henry this year, then watch out for them in this final stretch of the season. The Giants absolutely destroyed the Redskins last week, and they did it without Odell Beckham Jr. Saquon Barkley carried the offense and gave the Giants their fifth win of the season, and even though the Giants are 4-1 and one in their last five games, it's just been really hard for me to pick them because they've got nothing to play for. Alright, I guess that's unfair because I did find a scenario where they go 8-8 eight and eight and make it in, but that's very unlikely. Is there a chance? Yeah, sure. But the Titans have got a really good defense that hasn't gotten the credit they deserve, and the offense may have had an epiphany, not to mention they legit have something to play for. Titans win 24-23. Seahawks at 49ers. Okay, Seahawks fans, or 12th man, or whatever you guys are calling yourselves these days, I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. I was wrong to continue to doubt you guys, and I was wrong to doubt the defense, but I've got to say, this is one of the worst plays I've ever seen. And why are the Seahawks still trying to pass the ball on the one-yard line? Anyways, the Seahawks have pretty much locked up the fifth seed in the NFC wildcard already, making this game pretty pointless. The 49ers will probably play them tight early on, and the Seahawks could steal the idea that I had in my playoff prediction video last week for the Rams in Week 17, and that's to give the 49ers an extra win to potentially ruin their chances at the number one overall pick. I know it's petty and unlikely, but hey, I'd do it in my 32-man Madden leagues if I had this scenario. Seahawks win 28-24. Patriots and Steelers. These two have been the class of the AFC for the last few years, if not longer, but it feels like the rest of the conference is catching up, if not surpassing them. Now, with that said, the Patriots somehow still control their ability to land the number two seed in the AFC if they win out. The Steelers also control their destiny to win the AFC North, but things look bleak after three straight losses. I still have faith in the Steelers' offense to put up points when everyone is healthy, and James Conner's worth was most certainly validated in Oakland. Over in Miami, the Patriots' defense was giving up points to the Dolphins like a Big 12 defense. And I think slash hope that we get a crazy shootout in this one. In the end, Steelers win 38-35. 
On Sunday Night Football, we've got Eagles at Rams. The Eagles put up a fight last week against the Cowboys, but falling short ended their shot at winning the division. Now they have to win out and potentially wrestle that final spot from the Vikings. And you could probably talk me into it if their schedule wasn't so brutal, but I just don't see it for them. The Rams had the number one seed on the line and went into cold, windy Chicago and couldn't get any offense going against the Bears defense. In fact, the Rams offense has been steadily falling off for a few weeks now. I like their matchup this week to get things back on track. The Eagles secondary is a shell of the Super Bowl lineup and I think that they are put out of their misery this Sunday night. Rams win 35-27. And then to end the week on Monday Night Football, we've got Saints at Panthers. The Saints were caught off guard against the Bucks after the Cowboys kind of laid out the blueprint to shut down their passing game, but the Saints made the adjustments necessary in the second half to come back and win. If the Panthers had beaten the Browns last week, I promise you that this would have been my main upset special of the week. But something's wrong with Cam Newton. I heard rumors that there might be a shoulder issue with him that he's playing through, and I hope that's the case honestly, otherwise he's regressed considerably after one of the best starts to a season in his career. Hopefully Christian McCaffrey still goes off though because I've got him in both my fantasy playoff games. Saints win 24-17. And that's going to do it for my week 15 picks, guys. Thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, you know, all that good stuff. Remember, we're trying to reach a goal of 500 likes on this video. So if you enjoyed this, help a guy out, hit that like button. Don't forget to check out my playoff projection video with my Super Bowl predictions. Thank you for being one of the legends that stays to the end. And I will see you all in the next video.